March 28, 2017, Tuesday of the fourth week of Lent. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee-deep. Again he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The Word of the Lord. The response is, The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. 
He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus, because he did this on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. March 28th, Tuesday of the fourth week of Lent. The first reading comes from Ezekiel 47, 1 to 9 and 12. Ezekiel is living in exile in Babylon, but he's having visions about the restoration of the temple, a promise that God would bring the people back to Israel, restore the temple to a greater degree than it ever was before. And in fact, here we hear about the river of water coming out of the temple. This water represents life. We would say the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it restores the entire land. It is first the ankle deep and then knee deep, hip deep. Then you can't even pass through it because the life that God offers us is so filled with vitality that everything around us will be restored. In fact, even the land will break out in vegetation. That's part of the idea that if we live good lives, it'll affect not only ourselves, not only the people around us, but even nature. An example of that, if you take a 30-day silent retreat, by about the eighth day, wild animals will start approaching you because they can sense the peace within you. This is the idea of the lion and the lamb lying down together. That if we live good lives, even the enmity between animals and nature will be healed. The Gospel is from John 5, 1 to 3, and 5 to 16. This is the healing of the man who's paralyzed at the pool of Poseidon. The man's been at this pool for 38 years, and the legend is every time that an angel comes and stirs the water, first person in the water is healed. The man's paralyzed, he can't get to the water, so he's been there 38 years. Now, this particular story takes place at the pool of Poseidon. And it says it has five porticos. For a long time, people believed that this was a story, it was a parable more than a real factual story, because they couldn't find the pool of five porticos. But after World War II, they did excavations near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, and they found the ruins of a pool with five porticos. Rows of columns, four of them around the pool, one through the center to divide the men's part from the women's part. Interestingly enough, this pool was right next door to a temple dedicated to the pagan god Asclepius, who's the pagan god of healing. In fact, his symbol is a snake crawling a tree. That's still the symbol used for doctors today, the Carducius. Why would the pagans have built a temple dedicated to healing right next to the pool if the pool weren't associated with healing? Well, this man hasn't been healed for 38 years. Jesus comes along and says, do you want to be healed? And you can see this man and say, that's kind of a stupid question. Why do you think I'm here? But the man has been here 38 years. He's used to being ill. He's used to his situation. Very often we get in such a rut that if we're offered a way out, we don't want it because, well, way out means freedom. It means change. Flannery O'Connor says, people violently resist grace because grace leads to conversion. And conversion means change. And we don't like to change. Well, the man says, yes, I want to be healed. Jesus heals him, tells him to take his mat and walk. The only problem is, this happened on the Sabbath. Now, Jesus told the man to take his mat. That's work. Work's not allowed on the Sabbath. But he also healed the man. The man's been there 38 years. Pharisees are thinking, why doesn't he wait another day? Jesus won't make him wait another second. He heals them because the rules for the Sabbath are intended to bring us greater life. And Jesus offers us that life, that healing. 
Because of what he does, however, the leaders of the Jews begin to persecute him. He doesn't keep the rules of the Sabbath according to their interpretation of the rules. Again, Jesus keeps the greater rule. The Sabbath is supposed to be dedicated to the Lord, resting in the Lord, and that means also healing. He brought healing on the Sabbath. And may God bless us.